text is where students are taught to read the sight words and to blend the decodable words. This helps them buy into that alphabetic principle that letters and combinations of letters are the symbols used to represent the speech sounds based on systematic and predictable relationships. And it helps them to practice the learned spelling patterns intentionally. Because you, if you think about it, you play an instrument. You intentionally practice sounds over and over. You don't go in and sit down and learn all the chords for a guitar on the first lesson. You learn a few, and then you play, you know, Old McDonald. That's what I, I never got class Old McDonald on my guitar. <laughs> so, um, but you play Old McDonald, and then you play all the other songs, and then it's like, what, what's the one that everybody plays? Um, the Rover, no, what? Uh, <laughs> it's the, the dead goose. Oh come on! You don't have kids in you don't have kids in band because everybody plays the the dead goose song in band. Okay, forget it. <laughs> Doesn't matter. My point is that you have to do things in a systematic way. So sight words are errors that should be told. If they make a sight word error, you just tell them, and you make them go back and reread it. But errors with decodable words should be sounded out, referring to your sound spelling chart. This is your sound spelling chart as needed and then read again, okay? So what does that look like? Right now the stories that are gonna come home, well, for some of your kids. So this week we're teaching them the routines of six. Right now we're teaching them the routines. What is it, how my finger moves, read, spell, read, blending, all that kind of stuff. Well, we haven't gotten to the blending yet. We're, we've assessed your kids based on a placement test and we're gonna be looking, we're gonna be grouping the kids. So in the morning group, they'll be grouped. They may, some of your kids may come to me for reading. Some, may, some of my kids may go to Ms. Foray. Some may have Ms. Coughing, some may have Ms. Dyer, depending on how, what our groups look like. I might be teaching beginning lesson one. Ms. Coughing might be doing beginning lesson 11. The point of that is that we're not all starting at the same place. We have some kiddos who aren't gonna need this level of instruction and they're gonna need to be challenged. So what I'm showing you right now, you may see something more advanced than what I'm gonna show you right this minute, but know that the routines are the same for everything. So we start with, and next week, because we've been practicing, this little story is gonna come home. And so now you'll see that it has a word, okay, now they didn't learn the word pencils, right? But this is what we call a rebus kind of story. So they're gonna, you're gonna tell them the word pencil or they're gonna use the picture because we're, we're, we're getting them into the next level of decoding, okay? We're gonna, I'll show you what another book looks like. But you see the words I and C and the. Those are all <coughs> sight words. The is actually irregular, right? Because you can't sound it out. C becomes a decodable word. So this is how they will read this story. You will tell them pencils or they'll just know because they see the picture. And then you're gonna tell them to read. And they're gonna say, I see the pencils. And if they say, I see pencils, you're gonna say, no, left out a word, what's the sight word, or what's the word? And they, if they don't know, you're gonna tell them it's the. If they do know it, then you're gonna tell them, what's the word, the, go back and read it again. So, okay, you're the kiddo, read. turn the page. Now it's not, this one's pretty easy. And then paper. Read. I see the paper. Clock. Read. I see the clock. Nothing's underlined right now. Everything is either a rebus, you can use the picture, or it's a sight word. Now look what happens. Oh my gosh. I had a kid read the today. Oh, I came down on them like you don't even know. Not, in, <laughs> not the one kid, I didn't single them out, but I was like, oh, you did not look at the text. You guessed, because what happens? We guess, we started in a pattern, right? I see the, I see the, oh, you're not that smart, baby. You better go back and look. So here you go, ready? <laughs> Pay attention, read. I see two chairs. All right, good. <laughs> All right, read. I see the oh, I didn't tell you it was windows, sorry. So you get the idea? The first few stories that kids are gonna bring home, 
nothing's going to be underlined. It's going to be sight words, and the tough words like this are going to be rebus pictures, and you can tell them. We're teaching them the pattern. We're teaching them how it works. Okay? It's going to shift after lesson 11, where we learn, ah, now we can blend words. Now the books change. Now the routine changes. Now get your vice. Water, tea, <laughs> wine, beer, peanut M&Ms. Put it next to you. And you're going to need it. The underlined words are sight words, irregular words. They should read those without sounding them out. If they don't know them, you should tell them. The words that are not underlined are what? Decodable. You must make them sound them out. Oh my God. Okay. There's about 12 lines. You can handle it. You can do it. So this is how we teach them in class, and this is how they should read it to you. Read. Is sound. And. Read. And. Sound. Read. Fast. Read. Is a that second read is called pseudo fluency. It just builds in for them that we just read words and connect it. Okay? Why are they sounding everything out? <laughs> By the alphabetic principle. If they don't know it and they say fan, <coughs> don't let it go. You say ah 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 ah. Maybe that's a T. What sound does T make on the tomato card? Then you come back to the book and you say sound. And then you say sound and you start back at the beginning. Read. Okay. Here's what I want to tell you. If, you are, if you've done two sentences and five minutes has gone by and you're crying, stop. <laughs> and do two sentences well to teach them to buy into the alphabetic principle, then struggle through all nine lines, and then be sad and crying and call me and say mean things to me, okay? So just do two lines or three lines. We do it, we give up sometimes. We're like, okay, you gotta stop. So we wanna practice that way. Questions on how we practice the connected text. What, we want you to know this because this is not easy. This is not easy. This is not, this is what we went to school for. You already know how to do this. So when your kids come home and you, they struggle with this, if you haven't got this, you don't have, you don't know, oh, I'm gonna have them go back to this. Why am I gonna have them go back to the sound card for this T? Because when they wanna spell, what do I want them to look at? The cards. I want them to know that there are tools for them to use, and this is not just completely arbitrary. I mean, it kind of is, because who made up the symbols? You know, people made up the symbols, and it's arbitrary. But now, we want them to connect it to something. Questions on this, and how you read the stories? Questions on anything? I mean, related to this. <laughs> yes? Uh, how do we check that our kid is actually understanding the word, or, like, or the phonetic subject, instead of just memorizing the word? And yeah, okay, so like, so they're just not memorizing facts. They're just, they just recognize it as right. fact. Right, so, but at some point they're going to, and the reason they recognize it as fat is because like you I recognize fleb as fleb. Because now they just have it in their head. I think he means comprehension. Yeah, for comprehension. Oh. I mean, how, how are we just making sure that they're understanding the principles that we're trying to teach versus just, they just know that, that that's the word. Okay, so, so, when, if we're thinking comprehension as to what does fat mean, we don't care right now, okay? This, this has not worked. This is the bit, we're learning to do this so we can figure out, so we can apply comprehension later. If we're thinking, how do I know that they understand it's at? You're gonna know that because when they come to another word with at and they say you're gonna say, oh, they memorized fat. So in that one word, you may not know unless you go back and ask them for the sounds. But they are going to become automatic with a pattern. So Sam and Ann are in, like, they're the kids in our story. They're going to learn how to read Sam and Ann really quickly, and you don't need to have them blend it. 
But when they come to an S in another word and they don't know it, that's how you know that they have an internalized S represents. Does that, is that answering what you're, and then what you need, then, then what you do is you go back to the cards and you say sun card, sound, and you may have to do that. There are days that I have to go back to a card three or four times because they just haven't internalized that card. Did that? Okay. Other questions about what we're doing? Oh, come on. Really? It made that much sense? Good. Or you just want to go home. <laughs> so you're going to get sight word cards that come home. So um, in my class, they come home every week. So what we were working on this week came home yesterday. I know that the other classes do a little bit different. You do it after 10, right? You send home the colors. Okay, so um, the other classes send home, um, the first one that's going to come home is red, and it's going to have 10 cards on it. And they call, and those are, they, they do rainbow like they learn the red cards. I'm not so fun and sweet, sorry. Mine are plain and boring. And you get them um, each week. So this week, you got four cards that we're going to learn. Next week, you'll get however many more. But my class, that's my class. But everybody's going to get sight work cards. Boxes, um, my boxes already went home. Mine are going to come tomorrow with the first set. With the first set of sight words. Um, I know Ms. Coffin was working on hers today. You're, you got a little treasure box, and the sight word cards go in there. Okay? When a sight word is learned or becomes decodable, take it out. Because you're going to end up with 70 sight words. Please do not do 70 sight words every day. Oh, dear God, no. 10, 15. If they don't know 10 or 15, and you're telling them 15 cards, pull out all but five and work on this. Okay? Questions will come up as stuff comes home, so ask us, okay? We will answer your questions. Yes? They stay at home. Yep. Keep it at home. Cut out. Mine, you have to cut out the four cards each week. Well, theirs you have to cut out too, but um, mine come home on yellow half sheet. It's just same thing, just different system of how we do it. Um, I forgot what I was going to say.